think we're probably a bit apprehensive in the sense that we didn't really know. It was our first major championship finals, but we were playing in England, so I, I, I do believe that everybody in there was determined 150% to beat them. You know, as soon as we knew that we qualified for Euro 88, there'd been a lot of banter in our dressing room because we had Brian Robson uh, and in our dressing room, and you'd, you'd be playing against the likes of John Barnes and, and you know, um, Tony Adams week in, week out. So there was always this thing, you know, we're going to batter you and, you know, you're going to get your comeuppance and all this, or, you know, you shouldn't even be in the competition. All that sort of joking went on. And, of course, we were loving it because it was giving us the, the incentive to, to, to say to them, they actually genuinely actually think they're going to beat us like and all this. And if I'm honest, I think some of us thought they might beat us as well. When you looked at their squad and you looked at our squad, you, you thought, oh dear, it's going to be a tough one anyway. And this historic first European Championship final fixture for the Republic of Ireland is underway. And we hit them after six minutes with uh, Ray Houghton's goal. The ball came down the left-hand side. Tony Galvin hooked across over the penalty area, which was won by John Aldridge in the area, beat two English defenders, and the ball fell perfectly for Ray Houghton. Fell in the park. So it wasn't the kind of likely scenario that this little man was going to head a goal, but Heather he did. He climbed up, looped to Heather, uh, and hey Presto was in the net. Utter amazement actually when, when Frank Stapleton, I think it was, hooked the ball over. John Aldridge rises above of anyone, uh, I think it was uh, Tony Adams, and um, and the smallest man on the pitch, Ray Houghton, actually pinpoints the header right into the back of the net. And then, and then we're thinking, oh my God, oh my God, we're one up against the English. Now, now we've, it's back to the wall. Good play by Aldridge to knock it to Houghton and a superb finish by the little Scott. And it's 1-0 and five minutes on the clock. During the first half, I'd, have, I'd actually jarred my left knee <clears throat> very, very badly. So I knew that at half time I'd have to come off. I just knew that I wouldn't be able to last the rest of the game. And uh, I said it to Mick Byrne, and Mick Byrne went, there's no way, he put ice on it, he rubbed it, he did all sorts, and he said, there's no way you can come off. You can't come off. This game, we're winning 1-0 against England. There's no way you can come off the football pitch. Paul McGrath was banjaxed. His knee was at him. He shouldn't have even gone out in the second half. Uh, but he insisted on staying out there. He didn't want to go out in the second half. Charlton said, get him out there, you're playing. And he hobbled around, hardly able to do anything, but he was a presence. Over the top for Lineker, McGrath in there once more. Second half, England basically camped in the Irish half, and Packy Bonner performed heroics that, that afternoon. Back for Robson, good stop by Pat Bonner, and he earned his call there. I had a few saves and a few lucky ones, ones ahead of me. Uh, but in general, uh, I, I think we were very determined and we believed in ourselves when, as the game was going on. Here's Gary Lineker, and Bonner did well. In some ways, we rode our luck a little bit. Gary Lineker, I can remember missing you know, a few opportunities to score, which was very unlike Gary Lineker. Robson over the top, Lineker there. He was neutralised, if not by his immediate marker, certainly by Bonner. I mean, Bonner was out of this world. He really was. And Lineker, and Bonner did it again. We won it with a combination of self-belief and a lot of luck. Um, it was our first time in the finals and no one really knew what to expect, but I remember talking to players about it. When they walked out onto the pitch and they saw the sea of green, it gave me an enormous lift. They, they, they never, they, no, no one could underestimate the level or what the support meant to the Irish players when they went out there that day. They kind of thought there might be you know, four or five thousand paddies in the stadium. There was the Neckar Stadium in Stuttgart. It was over half filled with green and white and we completely eclipsed the English fans. The Irish fans, 11,000 of them as you can see are all here and in one piece and in very good voice. And that was the beginning of the band role. We don't forget that Ireland had never ever ever been in the finals of anything in their lives, European or World Championship and here they were in the finals and two years later they were to be in the worlds and six years after that they were to be in the worlds again so we're now one of the biggies. And now the referee looks at the watch and blows his whistle. Well, of the senior press guys, there were tears, unashamedly. I mean, guys, colleagues of mine, my, my former colleague Noel Dunn of the Irish Dependent, was in tears, and other, other, other colleagues as well, just broke down because they'd been, they'd been at the cold phase for 20, 30, 40 years. We'd never qualified for a major final. Here was our very first match in a major final against the old enemy, and we'd beaten them. The excitement afterwards was incredible. Uh, I remember the next day in, in, in my stuff, to put a heading on it, the longest day, and indeed it was, I think, in terms of football, it was a day that, that lives in the memory still. Hugely important. Unbelievable 
incredible moments in the Necker Stadium. They were gracious in defeat, and you can't, I mean, you know, you can't uh, keep, you know, pinching and pulling at them and saying, I, I thought you were going to beat us and stuff like that. But I'm sure we gave him a little bit of stick, all right. We didn't let, let him completely away, no chance. But we didn't carry it on. We just, you know, we just went around with smirks on our face for about uh, a year and a half.